A very good evening to all of you. Myself, Dr. Pratik Gar. So today we will discuss about tympanic membrane in ENT. So we all know what is tympanic membrane. It's a partition between external and middle ear. So what are the important points in the tympanic membrane as related to the examination? So firstly, the color. The color of tympanic membrane is pearly white or pearly gray. So color of the tympanic membrane is pearly gray or pearly white. It has been asked in the exam. And this tympanic membrane is in partition between external and inner ear and it is not straight. It is at an angulation, angulation of 55 degree. So tympanic membrane is obliquely placed in the external auditory canal at the angle of 55 degree and what are the dimension it is around 9 to 10 mm tall and 8 mm wide so try to remember it is around 10 mm area so total area like suppose if we uh, we have to remember the dimension so it's around 9 to 10 mm tall and 8 mm wide and what is the thickness thickness is 0.1 mm 0.1 mm is the thickness of the tympanic membrane and another important point the central part of the tympanic membrane is less mobile as compared to the peripheral part so and look at this diagram so this is my peripheral part and the rest this is my central part okay the so central part it is attached firmly with the handle of malleus that so it is less mobile and the peripheral part that is more mobile as compared to the central one these all points have been asked in the exam so the mobility is more in peripheral region dimensions are around 9 to 10 mm tall uh, what is the color color is pearly gray or pearly white then what is the thickness thickness is 0.1 mm now this tympanic membrane it consists of two parts the first one is pars tensa and the next one is pars flaccida so this area with the annulus this complete area till the level of the head of uh, uh, till the level of the neck of the malleus or short process of malleus is pars tensa pars tensa and area above that this is pars flaccida this is pars flaccida so what is the difference in this pars tensa or pars flaccida? This pars tensa is consist of all the three layer of the tympanic membrane. The outer layer which is facing towards the external auditory canal is the epithelial layer. Then middle layer is the fibrous layer and inner layer is endothelial layer. See what is uh, um, uh, specific about this tympanic membrane? This tympanic membrane is derived from all the three embryonic layer. All the three embryonic layer that is from the ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm. From the ectoderm, epithelial, outer epithelial layer, layer is there. From the mesoderm, fibrous middle layer is there. From the endoderm, inner endothelial layer is there. So pars tensa it forms a two-third area of the tympanic membrane which is the functional part and pars tensa is the above one-third area of the tympanic membrane which is relatively non-functional part. And look try to look in this diagram there is shown as a cone of light. So this cone of light suggests of the normal tympanic membrane and this cone of light is generally into antero inferior quadrant that is anterior and inferior quadrant antero inferior quadrant okay this cone of light and look at this this is my posterior malleolar fold which is posteriorly this is my anterior malleolar fold this is anteriorly this central part at the tip of the handle of malleus is known as umbo so this is my umbo Okay, and this is my handle of malleus. This is my complete handle of malleus, and this is short process of the malleus, and this is neck. If you talk about the prusac space, prusac space is somewhere here, just above the neck of the malleus, and this is the area which is first site of the cholecystoma formation. 
Now, let's talk about the total area of the tympanic membrane. So, the total area of tympanic membrane is 90 mm square. It is important, has been asked in the exam. So, total area of the tympanic membrane is 90 mm square, out of which parts residua, which is the one third, so it is 30 mm, parts tensor, which is the two thirds, so it is 60 mm. If examiner want to ask what is the effective vibratory area of the tympanic membrane, so it is 55 mm square. So tympanic membrane, see, it is at the angulation of 55 degree with the effective vibratory area of 55 mm square. Again, this is very important for the examination point of view. Now, some other golden points, the anterior malleolar fold, it is longer than posterior malleolar fold. And the reason being angulation of the tympanic membrane. Then color of tympanic membrane, we have already discussed, pearly gray or pearly white. Three layers of the tympanic membrane, outer circular layer, or we can say the epithelial layer, the middle fibrous layer, and inner one is the mucus layer, or we can say endothelial layer, that is the derived from the endoderm. Now, what is specific about pars residua? Pars residua is a part which is resting in the scutum and it consists of only two layers, the outer epithelial and inner endothelial. There is no middle fibrous layer. So that is the reason it is the most prominent site for the cholestatum of formation because uh, because of the lack of the pass, uh, uh, because of the lack of the middle layer, that is a fibrous layer in the pass fascida, any negative suction or negative pressure in the middle layer will lead to retraction of the fascida or that will lead to the atic retraction. Now, what is the no supply of the tympanic membrane? So, it is very, very important. So, let's draw the tympanic membrane. Suppose this is my tympanic membrane. So, the anterior half part so anterior half part is supplied by the auriculotemporal nerve and auriculotemporal nerve this is a branch of the fifth cranial nerve that is a trigeminal nerve so try to remember the anterior half part of the tympanic membrane as well as anterior half part of the external auditory canal is formed by the auriculotemporal nerve where is the posterior half of the tympanic membrane as well as external auditory canal, this will be innervated by the vagus nerve, that is the auricular branch of the vagus nerve. And what is different in external auditory canal supply? See, the superior part of the posterior half. So, posterior superior part will be supplied by a branch of the facial nerve. So, uh, that is that is about the external auditory canal. So, if you talk about tympanic membrane, anterior half by the auricular temporal nerve and the posterior half by the vagus nerve. This we are talking about the outer surface, the surface which is facing in the external auditory canal. So, what about the inner surface? The inner surface, that is the area of the surface facing towards middle ear that is supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve branch, that is a tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Very, very important has been asked multiple times in the exam. Now, what is the arterial supply of the tympanic membrane? See, outer surface is supplied by the deep auricular artery, which is a branch of the maxillary artery. So, outer one, outer area is supplied by the deep auricular branch. If you talk about the inner surface, so anterior half of the inner surface is by the anterior tympanic branch and the posterior half is by the posterior tympanic branch. Now, what is the difference? See, this anterior tympanic branch is a branch of maxillary artery which is supplying the anterior half of the tympanic membrane. Whereas, the posterior tympanic branch is a branch of posterior auricular artery uh, which is supplying the posterior half of the tympanic membrane which is facing towards the middle ear. Now, let's talk about venous supply. So, outer surface is draining into the external jugular vein, whereas the inner surface of the tympanic membrane, they are draining into the transverse sinus. Now, lymphatic drainage of the tympanic membrane. See, the outer surface, again, the surface facing towards the external auditory canal, they are draining into the pre-auricular lymph nodes, which are just below or anterior to the tympanic, uh, anterior to the ear or we can say the external auditory canal. And the inner side of the tympanic membrane is draining into the retropharyngeal lymph nodes. Now, what is the order of reliable marker of the tympanic membrane? See, umbo is the best. Then comes the handle of malleus and 
cone of the light so if amber is visible or cone of light is visible along with the handle of the malleus so we can say that this tympanic membrane is normal now let's talk about the incision of the tympanic membrane suppose if patient is having serious otitis media so what is the site of the incision to drain out the fluid and to insert the grommet we will give a incision in the in which area suppose first you tell me which type of incision we will give see we will give the incision radially if we want to put a grommet why because the fibers of the tympanic membrane are in radial direction so it will hold up the it will hold up the grommet so in serous otitis media we will give the radial incision and this will be in the antero inferior quadrant whereas if we talk about the incision in the acute otitis media filled with the pus if there is pus filling in the middle ear so we have to drain out the pus so we will give a circumferential incision so we will cut down the fiber so that all the pus will come out and this site of incision will be in the posterior inferior quadrant just opposite to the round window so that there will be no pus collection at the level of the round window so we will decrease the chance of infection in the labyrinth so i hope you got an idea